right, welcome everyone. It's uh, it's quite a common in. It's a uh, lot more people here than I feared, <laughs> since it's uh, kind of a, a narrow topic. So well, that's good. Uh, hopefully, it's uh, going to be interesting. Uh, I see that there's a sheet here with some an some announcements. I don't know if you've been read this already, but uh, have everyone collected your books and your mugs and your picture sheet? All right, good. Then, uh, then I don't have to worry about that one. I apologize for not being able to to use the proper presentation mode, but that screws up the the recording. So we just have to do it like this. Uh, we'll be fine. So this talk is about working with binary file formats. It's going to be interesting. So the agenda for this talk, uh, we're going to start um, to talk a little bit about binary file formats, um, what they are and uh, what they do. Uh, go on, go over some some things about how to read and interpret uh, binary file formats or parsing them. Then we're going to go over some uh, some examples uh, of uh, how different file formats are structured. Uh, I'm also going to show you some uh, a blog post where they have tried to, to list a typical generic uh, format for, for binary mm -hmm. file formats. Uh, I'm going to touch upon NDNS uh, because that's something that you will touch upon if you, if you do these things. Um, and then we're going to dive in to see what kind of .NET classes uh, we need to use when parsing binary files and uh, what methods and uh, stuff like that. And I'm going to see also some examples of uh, how to read different types of data. And then I'm going to go through an example where I um, created a parser for the PNG image format. I'm going to look and just discuss a little bit, you know, the design decisions and how you would go about designing, you know, your own parser. Uh, it's going to be a lot of code I'm going to look at there. And, and lastly, I'm going to touch a little bit about how to write binary data. And uh, if you want to create your own binary file format, how would you go about designing the structure and, uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, so what is a binary, binary file format? So it's, um, I think on, uh, on Wikipedia I found this, um, and it's, it's pretty much any file format that contains primarily binary data, as opposed to you know, text files and scripts files uh, that have ASCII data. And um, as you might have tried already, if you, if you try to, to read a binary file format the normal way, uh, you just get gibberish back. I have a, an example there that I'm going to, to show you quickly also. So um, this is uh, a, a PNG file. By the way, should I take the size up a little bit? Well, that was not what I wanted. Yeah. How do I get out of this? Is the size okay or? Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to, to read in. Usually, when you read the contents of a file, you would use something like get content, right? Um, and we use the raw parameter to define that we want to read everything as one blob instead of, uh, of reading in uh, as, a, as a string array. And this is typically what you would look at. Let me see if I can try that again. Okay, there's something wrong with the terminal here. Okay, but this this text is what you would typically see if you if you try to, to look at a binary binary file format the regular way. It doesn't give you much information. Uh, and that's because of course the the binary file uh, the data is stored as, as byte arrays instead of ASCII. 
Uh, and it, you have an encoding parameter in get content that lets you see this binary array. So this is the, the binary data of the file. And, uh, and it's an array of, of bytes. You can join it by space so we can kind of see, see it a little easier. So it's, it's not much information you can get from, from just looking at the binary data. Um, I don't know if you know about it, but it's uh, you have this format hex command that you can use that is quite quite useful, which gives you an overview where you actually see the the binary data side by side with the ASCII representation of the data. Um, but clearly, uh, just looking at binary data doesn't really help us out in in getting information out of there. So um, then we have to do some parsing, and. Um, uh, usually, when we think about the contents of, of regular ASCII files, we think in, in terms of you know strings of text and character arrays and stuff like that. And uh, as we just saw uh, with binary files, it's byte arrays that we are thinking about. So we have to read byte arrays and we have to write byte arrays. And of course, we have to take those uh, data in, in, in bytes and convert them to something meaningful if we are able to, uh, to parse them. Uh, it's a bit tricky because there's no standardized format for binary files. Uh, so it's every new file format you want to, to look into. You have to do a lot of research. Uh, and you're pretty much bound to, uh, to have to use the, um, the official format documentation for the format you are working with. Uh, and if you don't find the format documented anywhere, um, you might uh, do it. Uh, by reverse engineering, but that's going to take a long, long time, <laughs> sleepless nights and trial and error. And I would not recommend doing that, at least not if it's the first time you worked with binary file formats. So it's um, it's a pain. Right. Anyone here actually tried to 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 make a parser for binary file? Ah, you have good. All right. That's good, two of you. So you can help me out on him if I say something wrong or if you have some some additional input, please, please just uh, shout out. And if you have any uh, questions on the way, also just stop me. In. So we're going to look at some some example formats. Uh, one of the first binary file formats that I uh, decoded or tried to decode was the the link files. Uh, that's a that's a binary file format. Uh, file format. We would have thought that they could have used just ASCII text for that. Uh, and this is the, the high-level structure of a link file. It consists of uh, a shell link header uh, and a link target ID list uh, section and a link info section. Uh, and then you have a section called string data and optionally uh, a section, one or more sections called extra data. And, and the reason that they, they do this is uh, if when, when you uh, deal with structures in, in binary files, uh, you have to, uh, they have a set size that they can be since it's all uh, sequential in the file. So we have to know exactly that uh, this section starts at uh, that position and it's exactly eight bytes long and then the next section begins. So if for some reason, uh, in this case, you have string data. So what do you do if you, if you want to put a string longer than that size? And the way that they usually do is that they have some extra additional fields at the end of the file uh, that have the additional data if, if you need it. So that means that if you want to parse a string, in that case, in the string data section, uh, that is too long for that section, you will first have to read that and then you have to jump to the, the extra section and keep reading from there and, and join the results back to get the full string data. And uh, this looks kind of simple, right? <laughs> it's just some, some sections. Uh, but usually when you have the, the overall sections of a binary file, every section have their own structure. Uh, so it quickly gets, uh, gets kind of complicated. So this is just an example of uh, part of the shell link header, which we saw was the first section. And you can see that that section has its own structure. 
where you see that first you have a header size, and you have a SID value, and you have some flags and attributes and some time values, and it's actually much longer than that also. So that's why you need all this documentation uh, available when you work with files, binary files, uh, because it's uh, quite often you will get lost uh, if you just mistake the position by, by one, you will just get rubbish data back. So it's very important to, to understand the structure and know the sizes of the different fields. Yeah, so, so this is... Yeah, I, I think this is four byte chunks, uh, I believe. So that means that these three fields here are are, uh, are the seed, and we have the flags, attributes. I think it's four bytes. Um, I have the. This is the official uh, documentation. It's it's quite long. Actually, here you can see the additional fields as well. So it, it, this documentation is actually quite good because it's uh, thorough and you, you have almost every everything here. And you can see here, you know, it, it states that the header size is four bytes, the seed is sixteen bytes, flags is four bytes, and so on. And you have some that are eight bytes. So, and this is all information that you need because you need to know how long you're going to read. Uh, and I'm going to show you some examples why that is important later on. And uh, and just to go back to the link uh, example, uh, just to complicate things, um, when I started creating a parser for this, I quickly saw that there were some some sections containing a special kind of data inside the link files, which are not documented anywhere. <laughs> You're nodding, so you've probably seen the same thing, uh, and it's a pain in the butt. Uh, I, I found some some people online that have uh, come quite far in reverse engineering that file format. Uh, so based on that, I was able to get some some data out of it, but uh, it's it's still not 100% uh, documented. So it's, uh, I, I think there's probably a reason why Microsoft haven't documented that particular uh, data structure. But um, yeah, that's, uh, sometimes you just uh, see these kind of things. Uh, but the other example is the, the example I'm going to use for my parser, and that's the PNG file format. And the reason I chose that is because the documentation on that format is very good. Uh, everything is uh, documented and uh, it's open. And the, the overall structure of this one is looks like this. Uh, very simple, you have a signature, and then you have one or more chunks that define it as that's the different sections. So it, at first sight, it looks kind of simple to work with. Um, and then, of course, uh, you have to look at, okay, these chunks, how are they uh, put together? They have their own structure, and they can have two different uh, layouts. Uh, you either have a length or not, uh, and, and based on that, uh, if, uh, you, if you start with the lower one, if the length is zero, then of course you don't have any data. So, so that's the only difference between these two variants. So, so you have a length that tells, tells you the length of this chunk and the type, uh, and then the data itself, and then you have a CRC field at the end. And that's, qu that's quite useful. Not, uh, not every format have that, but uh, it's nice because that means that you can you can take the data and you can calculate the CRC yourself and compare it with the CRC field to verify that you actually got the correct data and that it's not corrupt. So, uh, but these trunks then, that's uh, where it gets a little bit hairy because uh, there are a lot of different trunk types defined for the PNG format. And uh, they have dif dif divided them into two. You have the critical trunks uh, which you see here, uh, and the naming of them is just horrible, IHDR, that have to be the first trunk. And then you have the PLT, you have to be the first before the IDAT, and, and stuff like that. The good thing is that they have an N trunk, uh, and that's really helpful when you are uh, reading through binary files, because uh, then you can set up a loop and then you know exactly when you are at the end of the file. Uh, so that's very, very good. And then you have what they call the uh, ancillary chunks, which not 
it's just optional if they're there or not. Um, some of them have uh, requirements to, to ordering, as you see in, in parentheses there. Some of them have to be before or after or you know, different chunks. So you see there's, there's quite a lot of, uh, of different types of chunks for the PNG format. Um, and you might have guessed it already, but each of these chunks have their own defined format. Uh, with their own sections and, and fields that have to be, you know, particular length and uh, contains a particular kind of information. So um, I also have the. This is the official documentation for the PNG format. Uh, it's quite long, but it's very good. And you have all the different. Here you see, you have uh, all the different chunks. So if you just go to, to this one, and you can see that there. They have uh, this is the the chunk type. And you have information about the structure of the chunk and what kind of information is in there and what it's used for. And, and for the PNG format, also some of the chunks are, are meant to be linked together when you use them. So you have stuff like gamma profiles and, 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 uh, and color profiles and stuff like that, that uh, when you get the data, if you, if you want to, to analyze, for instance, how many colors there are in the image, you might want to, to take the data from two different chunks and correlate them together. Uh, and I think the, for some of them, uh, what they do is that, for instance, the, RG, uh, the color values are in a long array, and then you have gamma values in, in another chunk, in a long array, and, and the index is what you join them on. So the first item on the gamma value is, correlates to the first different colors. So it's, uh, it's quite, quite complex. Um, so are you scared yet? <laughs> yeah, so I just got to quickly talk about NGNS, uh, and that's because uh, when you talk about binary files uh, and, and how the data is ordered in there, there's kind of two different ways of doing it. It's the it's the the big NGN and the little NGN uh, way, and this it, it tells you a little bit about how the bits are organized within the byte. <laughs> so, uh, and as you can see, I just took that picture from, from the Wikipedia article. Yeah, you should head over there and read some more about NDNS if you, if you are interested in that. Uh, so it, it's, it's all about um, the ordering of the bits within the byte. So um, luckily, uh, when you work on modern systems, some Windows boxes and stuff like that, it's little Indian that is used. So, uh, so we don't really have to worry that much about it. But, uh, but if you suddenly get a file, binary file from some other system, you might end up with uh, not getting the data that you uh, suspected you would get, and, and then you might have to check in if, uh, if it's something to do with the engine, if it's big and then where you thought it was little engine. So, um, yeah, there, there's actually, a, if you do use the system bit converter, they have a static method called, called it's little engine. So what you could do, and I think I did that in, in my example, is to just use that as a check, just to see that it's actually a little Indian, and then you can can have an, um, a logical branch there to, to handle both types if you need to. So .NET classes. Uh, the easiest way of, of doing this, uh, in my opinion, is to, to just use .NET classes available. Uh, Makes stuff, uh, I think, much easier. And, uh, and these are probably the most helpful .NET classes to know about when dealing with binary files. Uh, you have the file stream and the binary reader classes, which we use to, to read the file. Uh, and the bit converter is, uh, is a class you would use to, to convert stuff, of course, and text encoding class uh, to deal with any text, uh, text data. And the, the array class is uh, mostly if you are uh, dealing with the wrong endian type and you need to reverse the order of the bits, then you use the, the reverse method of the array class. It's perfect for that. Yeah, so just some, some slides here before I, I take a uh, little demo uh, to talk a little bit about uh, how you would go about reading stuff from a binary file. Uh, you, you should. What I do is I set up the binary reader and it has uh, a number of different methods that you would use to, to read binary strings uh, or binary streams, rather. Uh, you have, of course, the, the read method, 
which takes an input of an integer, which tells it uh, how many bytes to read, as easy as that. Uh, you have the read byte uh, method, which just reads the next byte. And um, and read bytes. I'm sorry, I said wrong on the read because it takes two integers, uh, two parameters. One is the bytes, and one from where uh, the position you want to read from. Read bytes takes um, takes the current position and reads the number of bytes. Uh, and then you have uh, the different uh, read uh, and sign integers 16, 32, and 64, which uh, corresponds to two, four, and eight bytes. And uh, and the important thing. To, to know about the binary reader when you use these methods is that every time you read bytes, it advances the position in the file or in the stream rather. Uh, so that means that I find it easier to just read everything sequentially and just then deal with the chunk data uh, afterwards. But if, if you want to, and if you, if you just need a particular piece of, of data inside a file, that means that you might have to just read uh, some bytes to get, for instance, the position of the chunk that you're after, and then you have to set the position to the start of that chunk, read the correct number of bytes, and then perhaps there's another piece of information you want, and then you have to find out where that starts and set the position and, and read and so on. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's important that you, um, you um, remember that every time you read, you advance the position. It's, it's quite easy to see the current position and change the position. I will show you that later. But it means that it's it's good to have a pen and paper beside you and take some notes while they're doing this. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was talking about. The the base stream um, property of the binary reader gives you the length and position. Uh, this is uh, very useful. Uh, the length is just gives you the, the total length of the base stream. But the position is uh, it gives you the current position, but it also lets you set the current position so we can just you know uh, change it to to wherever uh, position in the stream you want and then you also have uh, seek which is uh, also a good way of uh, going directly to a specific position in the stream uh, you have the option of actually using uh, get content i'll show you the, the encoding uh, parameter in get content where you can get back uh, a byte array um, but I, f I find that it's uh, it's much easier to just use the binary reader. You have a lot more uh, methods and, and stuff to work with, in my opinion. Okay, ready for some more demos. Yeah. So again, I'm I'm taking a PNG file as an input. And I'm setting up a, a file stream. Uh, this is pointing to the file, and you, you define the uh, um, the mode, which is open, and the file access. You don't need to, to write in, in this case, so, so we just need read access to the file. And, uh, and you use this file stream to create the, uh, the file reader or the binary reader object. And here. I can give an example of the uh, the length property of the base stream, which tells us the total length of the the stream. So it's 792, and you can do uh, show the position, and it shows that it starts at the first position in the stream. So we're right at the beginning. So that's good. And uh, just to show that we are automatically advancing when we read, I'm going to read two bytes. I'm, I'm, there's no output because I'm saving it into a variable. Uh, and then if you look at the position again, you see that it's a 2. So it has advanced our position in the file. And of course, we could just reset the position to 0. And if you look at it, you will of course be back to 0. Yeah, question? What's the difference between using uh, position to get to position? Yeah, uh, that's actually a, a good question, and uh, and I've actually there's been so long since I used seek method, so I, I don't actually uh, remember. Do any of you? Seek is a much more consistent form of 
Oh, yep. Yep. That's correct. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it takes an extra parameter uh, that lets you define what he said. You know, we can define that, okay, I want to seek from the start or from the current position. Uh, it, can, it can be quite useful uh, when you do arbitrarily uh, looking to the, for stuff. It might be if, you, if there's two sections that you want to read from and you know where they start, but not related uh, to each other, but just from the from the start, and then you might use seek instead because, you, okay, I want to go this far from the beginning, even though we are already in the middle of the file. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to show you some, some examples of uh, how to interpret uh, typical code structures, because just reading the bytes doesn't really help that much. Uh, if you look at the bytes that I read, Wow, this is not working good for me today. Oops. Anyone have seen this problem before? Yeah, okay. You, you, you saw when I did the other test that uh, the bytes array is just a bunch of numbers, really. So it doesn't give you any meaningful information. So I'm going to do some demonstrations of how to interpret different types of stuff. So what I'm doing now is that I'm, I'm, I'm using the parts that I've already created to, to parse a PNG file. I'm just going to, to go into it and look at uh, some positions where I know that there are a specific type of, of value that I want to demonstrate. And in this case, I want to see how you would get uh, some string value back. So uh, just going to read that in. And then you for strings, it's quite easy. You have the system.txt.encoder class, uh, which has, uh, in this case, I just use ASCII, but you could probably use UTF-8 and, and all the supported types there. And uh, and you use the get string method on, on the it takes input of a byte array, and it gives you back a string. So here you see, title, space, PNG suite. So that's text that I've gotten directly from the binary file. Um, read as a byte array, and then converted to, to ASCII text. Well, yeah, yeah. No, no, that. Uh, no, uh, this file is uh, is my next demo. Uh, actually, it's it's the it's the full parser. So it's just I'm just reading the whole uh, whole file so that I can e more easily pinpoint exactly the position I want to show. So, um, but it's uh, so what I'm doing here is that I'm looking for a particular type of chunk in the file, and I'm just picking the first one, and then I'm I'm getting the raw data as uh, a byte array. So it will be the same as just you read bytes and and however long. No. Uh, oh yeah, you mean the, the type of information that you're in there? Yeah, yeah. Because these are the metadata in the file. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm not. Uh, yeah. So this is probably the the, the first field that title. That's the that's the key, and the other one is the value of the metadata. That's correct. And of course, that's that's strings, and you would uh, do something similar with uh, with integers. Uh, but then you would use the bit converter class uh, and convert it to to an unsigned integer. So there you see. And this is the, the width of the image, and it's 32 pixels, and, uh, so it's quite small, and that's on purpose, <laughs> because these files can be big. Uh, I'm going to do uh, another example of, uh, of stuff that you might find in, in binary files, and this is actually by reading a, a link file. I'm just going to set it up and then set up a new file stream and binary reader. I'm going to set the position to 24 because I know that that's where I want to be. And first I'm going to read four bytes. And of course, 
I get 32 back, which is not that interesting really. Uh, but I know because I've looked at the um, documentation for the section that I'm actually reading from that uh, it, this uh, these four bytes are supposed to be file attributes. And uh, what you can do then is just cast that to the system.io file attributes class. And then you see that this file has the archive bit, the file attribute set. So, so that's actually also a good way and a good indication that I'm actually reading and getting the correct information. Because if I had made an error uh, here, uh, I would not have got that back. And another type of field you might find is the dates. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just read in the bytes because I, you see, I don't set the position, and that's because I know that the next section is a creation time field. Um, and again, you can see that the, the information I get back is not really useful. Uh, and this time I use uh, the datetime class from file time method. And then I actually get a proper daytime object back based on the binary data that I read from the file. So, so these are, it, it's not enough to know just how to read the bytes, but you need to know how to convert those bytes into some meaningful data. And, and again, you would need the, the file format documentation to be able to know what kind of information in, is in there. It's, is it text? Is it integers? Is it dates? Uh, stuff like that, or even att file attributes, like I showed you. Yeah, I actually have an example here uh, where I set the position wrongly because I made an error, and I'm 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 reading the correct number of bytes, but my start position is wrong, and then I try to convert it into date time, which of course would fail. So, uh, and that was just two. Um, but it's difference, it should be, was it 24, I think, yeah. So, so it's very, very important that you think about what you're doing and always keep track of where you are in the file and, uh, or in the file stream. Um, and uh, it might be good to, uh, to have mechanisms in place in the parser to, to verify that you are at the correct location. Um, and the good thing about the PNG format is that for every trunk there's a trunk type and you know the value of the different trunk types which means that when you read that you can actually do a check to see that okay is this what I'm uh, wanting it to be you know is it am I at the right correct uh, position in the in the stream any questions on that part yeah <laughs> yeah, usually uh, most files have uh, the first, I think it's the four, first four bytes usually are the file signature. So it should be enough to just read those, but you would have to know what the file signature is for the different files. Uh, there are uh, websites that are, have tried to collect, you know, the most known files and give you the sig signatures, which means that you can write a, a file signature check function. So just uh, it's a case on, on what you get back, and it will return you know the type of file it is. Um, so it's possible, yeah, but it's it's not foolproof. It, you don't. It's not. It's uh, having that signature is not a guarantee that that is that kind of file. Uh, I think it's uh, some, some kind of legacy stuff from, from all those days. I'm not sure if uh, all formats, but uh, most I've seen have some kind of file signature. And it, it's in the beginning of the file, so it's easy to just read those first and, and know that they are correct. If I, uh, for the formats I've worked with, and they all had file formats, I usually, right at the beginning, I read those and just verify that the signature is correct. And if not, I just exit out right away. I, I do that as a security, or not security, but just a precaution, because if the signature is wrong, some other stuff might be wrong and I might get a lot of errors. So it's easier. All right, so now we're going to look a little bit about uh, creating a parser. Uh, and the example is, as I said, a PNG parser. And 
I already, I think I mentioned most of this, but it's very important that you find the documentation for the file format you want to work with. You read through it uh, and that you understand, you know, you don't have to understand everything in there because probably as in, in this documentation for the PNG, there's a lot of information uh, and you don't have to understand everything in there, but you have to understand about how to find information about the structures and the sizes of the different fields and, and stuff like that. So it, uh, what I did uh, when I created my parser is that I, I started up by just uh, noting down just as comments in the file all the different chunks and all the rules about ordering and stuff like that so that I had it in, in the file easier. You, you could have it on the paper beside you, but it's, it's very important that you know the structure of the file before you start. And, uh, and then, of course, you have to plan your code. How do you structure the code? How do you logically uh, want to design your parser? Um, I didn't do it on, uh, on when I created this parser, but uh, if any of you were at my Matthias's and me talk about optimizations, we talked a little bit about using pseudocode to, uh, to, uh, as an optimization technique. And uh, this is also a good example of where it would be helpful to, to write some pseudocode to try to think about, okay, how, how should I logically uh, process the file and, and get the different chunks of data, all the different sections, and how do I process them? Um, and then, of course, you have to, to implement, write the code, and how to read different uh, bits of data and how to convert it into meaningful data and probably write some custom object back out uh, to, the, to the output stream. And what I did was that I, uh, since we're dealing with a lot of different type of chunk types, I, write, I wrote separate uh, small parsers for each type. Um, and that, that makes you know, the main function quite simple to read because I'm, uh, I'm just looping through uh, and getting all the different chunks and then I'm just checking, okay, what's the chunk type for this one? Oh, it's this kind of chunk. Then I call the, the parser for that chunk to get uh, parsed through and, and, and get a, a wrong object back with the information. And of course, you have to do a lot of testing uh, and verification. And it helps to, as you said, you know, for a PNG file, uh, to just have it open in Explorer and open the tab uh, where you get all the metadata information because in that way you can actually verify that they're reading and interpreting the data correctly. Uh, not all files uh, gives you that opportunity, of course. And so uh, sometimes you just have to look at what you get back and, and try to guess whether it's correct or not. So, uh, and sometimes you, uh, you don't have documentation at all. Uh, I, um, I got a question from my colleague, colleague uh, Jan Agel. He had uh, <clears throat> a binary file format where he wanted to pick out some metadata information and I couldn't find any, any uh, documentation on the format. Um, so what I did is I just opened up a hex editor, just looked at the file. And, and luckily, the, uh, the information that he wanted was early in the file, and it was in ASCII, uh, or it was in UTF-8, I don't remember, but one of those two, so, so it was quite obvious where in the file it was. And since I had, an, uh, had it in editor, I could just count, you know, to get the correct position. But the, the problem was I didn't know the size, so I had to just read until I got nothing back and just assume that that meant that I've finished reading the, the text uh, and then and then convert it. So, um, uh, or actually I had to do the conversion while I was checking because of course you wouldn't get nothing in the middle of a stream, you would always get something, but by converting it to a string and checking if that string I got back was an empty string, then I uh, assumed that I was at the end. Uh, that doesn't always work because it might be a, a text with spaces in between, of course. But in this case, it was just a word with no spaces, so it worked. Um, but um, it always helps to, to have some way of uh, verifying that you get what you want. All right, so let's look at uh, a proper implementation of a parser. Um, It's, I just want you to know that I've, I've not implemented parsing all the different chunk types. 
Um, I just didn't have the time to, to implement it all. I just uh, implemented uh, the parsing logic and, and some of the fields, well, some of the chunks. So I thought I'd just start by actually running the parser and you can see, see the output of it. And I have the wonderful name of test for my file, so it's very easy to understand what's, what's going to happen when I run it. <laughs> so this is hard-coded to read one particular PNG file uh, and parse it out into, into objects. And this is what you get back. So pretty much what I have is one object per chunk. Uh, and you can see that uh, the properties I have, I first have the type of the chunk, uh, a description, and the length, and I also keep the raw data. Uh, you don't have to do that, but uh, in, in my case, I, I find it's, it's okay to, to actually keep the raw data uh, if I need it for something else or a verification or whatever. And then I have the, the parsed data, uh, and then the CRC field, uh, as I showed you when we went through how the different chunks were on us, all the chunks have a CRC field. And then I calculate my own CRC value based on the on the data that I have. And then I can see that, you know, I got everything and nothing is corrupt. And I also noted down some, some nice to have information for myself while I was working with it, you know, start position and end position of the chunk. So some of this information you can scrap when you're done, uh, but uh, while working on it, keeping note of these kind of things is uh, quite helpful. Um, so you can see, for instance, uh, yeah, this one, this is a text field or a text chunk, and the data is title. So, so this one is, uh, is one of the, probably the one I showed you in the example earlier. So I could probably do uh, type equals um, yeah. So this is the the parse data from from that particular uh, text chunk. So it's a key value pair, title and PNG suit. So this was the same example that I did, did earlier. So how did I structure and, and create this parser? I'm going to, to actually start at the bottom of the, of the file, of the script, because I, I start by, uh, or at the bottom, I have the, the, the entry function of the parser itself. I just call it read PNG. And it takes a path as a parameter, easy. And you see, I, I just you know verify that the path is correct and resolve it in case you are using relative paths and stuff like that. And I set up the file stream and the file reader, same as I did on the other examples. And here you see that I'm reading the uh, first eight bytes. Perhaps eight bytes is more uh, normal. I don't remember if it's four or eight, but in this case, it's eight bytes. And and here I actually check to see if the signature is what I would expect it to be for a PNG file. And if not, I'll just write a warning and then break out the script. And, and this is where it's very nice that I have a specific type of chunk called end or I end in this case, because that means that I can just do a simple do until loop uh, to read all the different chunks. So that means I'm just doing this until I find a chunk with a type of I end and then I know that I'm at the end of the file. And then I call another function, a helper function that I created called read trunk. And that's the next function that you see here. Oh, come on, read trunk. So what this is uh, doing is just reading the trunk. So it, it gets the reader object and it notes down the start position and the length and, and stuff like that. Here you see I used the is little endian uh, function. And, uh, and, and then if it's little endian, then I have to know that I have to reverse the, the order to get the correct value and stuff like that. So, but the important thing here is that I yeah, and I calculate the CRC. I had to create uh, a separate function to, to do the CRC calculation, 
by the way. So if, you, if you're interested in that, I have it on my blog, actually. Um, a function to just take input and calculate CRC. Um, and this is where I just do a switch on the trunk type. And then I call the, all the different uh, parsers for the different trunks, like this. And save it into, into a variable. Yeah. And then I... I also, the description field is not something that you get from the file, so, so I'm just doing the same thing and, and just to have some kind of nice description uh, of the different chunks based on the chunk type. And of course, I gather everything up in, uh, in a custom object and write it to the output. And then of course, this is the easy part, and this is the part that you could probably uh, get a lot of help by uh, by using pseudocode, because if you if you know about the end marker and, and stuff like that, you can you know write that in pseudocode, and you can quickly see that oh I can do a do until end, that's that's cool, and and I will probably help need a helper function to read the chunks and, and stuff like that. And then of course it's just a matter of uh, taking chunk by chunk, pulling up the documentation for that chunk, and and creating this small. Uh, let's see if we go to the. This one is, is uh, the parser for the first field, the first trunk. Uh, and then I know that you know the first uh, four bytes is the width, then comes the height, then it's a bit depth and a color type. And, and all this is information that I know from the documentation. So I just store, break everything up into different, different parts. Uh, and then, of course, I have to you know, convert them into meaningful data. So this is the boring, boring job. <laughs> You have to do this for all the different uh, chunks, uh, and that's why I didn't implement all <laughs> parses for all uh, all the chunks. Um, and of course, parsing an image format in the console, um, you probably wouldn't need anything else but the metadata anyway, because the the image data you wouldn't be able to view it as as an image in the console. Then you would probably have to use uh, you know, um, some form classes or something to open up a, a window and, and then like, get it in as an as image. Uh, but then you're probably better off just <laughs> open, it, open it up, the whole image in one go instead, instead of doing it inside here. But, uh, so I'm, I'm not going to go through, you know, every, every chunk here, but uh, as you see, they are each are different. And, and you might be lucky, you might... Uh, be working with a with a much simpler format where uh, where the different sections are are similar and, and then of course you can just have one parser and uh, and and the logic might be uh, much simpler so i've actually passed the 45 minute marks now so that means i have to keep going um you can of course use this if you want to write binary data uh perhaps you want to make your own binary file format uh, and, and knowing how to read it it's quite easy to, to figure out how to do the opposite so you just have to think about all these with sections and size and uh, stuff like that and of course you wouldn't use a binary reader but you would use a binary writer and i have some some quick examples here of how you would convert uh, stuff to a byte array because you have to write it everything has to be written as a byte array so for instance if you have a string you could use the text encoding class again uh, like this get bytes it will take the string as a parameter and return a byte array for that string so you have to do this for all the strings before you do the uh, writing with the binary writer and the same if you have an integer you would use the bit converter to to convert the number in this case it's 99 convert that down into an array of bytes let me quickly show you how that would look. So the integer 99 looks like it's not very exciting. It's 99, but 0, 0, 0 as well. It's 4 bytes. And if you want to make your own uh, file format, I already mentioned how nice it is to have an end of file marker. So you will do yourself a favor if you uh, implement that in your own format, if you want to try that. Uh, and also, please, it's very important for your own sanity <laughs> to also have a size field 
uh, because that's the only way you actually know how to navigate and and jump around in the file. So sometimes uh, at, when I was working with the link format, uh, I had to do some some complicated mathematics or not complicated mathematics, but it was it was, it was not always apparent when I was at the end of something. And then I have to use okay the size of this chunk, and, and if I know the size of the the one before, or and, and sometimes you just have to do some calculations to to figure out you know the total where, when you are at the end. And I just want to show you one blog that I found um, uh, called "How to Write Binary File Formats." It's uh, it's quite quite nice, and and here you actually have set up uh, some examples for some generic uh, formats. And um, if you want to to go that route and make your own file format, it I think this one is is uh, it's good to use as a, as a starting point. There you see as defined you know headers and, and sizes and body and stuff like that. So it's it's some good information in here. Uh, I have the link in um, in the presentation as well. So this is not PowerShell or even uh, C Sharp related at all, but uh, the concepts should be the same, whatever language you use. Yeah, so to, to summarize, um, <clears throat> I think it's important to know the dot cl dot class, dot .NET classes that you need to use. So we need to know how to actually use .NET classes. Uh, and you need to figure a way of, of getting documentation for the format you want to work with. Uh, and also get example files. And um, in the PNG file example, since many of the chunk types were um, were different based on if the, if the file contains color or not and stuff like that, you, you might end up needing you know many test files to actually test all different uh, pieces of uh, sections in there. And lastly, just persevere. Uh, it's, uh, it can be tough and, and a lot of work, but uh, just stick in there and, uh, and you'll, you'll get there. So, um, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, if you don't have any more questions. Yeah. Sorry, if I can use. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure actually. Uh, I've had to I've had to look into that. But uh, uh, you're used to not having any struct support at all. But now that we have classes, um, yeah, mm. yeah, and then you would just fill it with data. Mm. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, good point. Any more questions? No. Oh, so we are all experts in reading binary file formats. That's perfect. These are just the two links to the to the file formats uh, that I uh, have discussed. The documentation it's it's going to be in there. Uh, if you want to work with other formats, you have to look up the documentation yourself. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much.